My name is Bobby Holly. I'm with Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue. I'm the lead pit master over here. And uh, we're going to be cleaning a Syntex today. Um, this is a 1,000 gallon Syntex smoker out of Luling, Texas, made by our friend Michael. It's a repurposed uh, propane tank, but uh, it's got lots of engineering in it. It's got these greased ball bearing racks. It's also got optimal amount of real estate inside of the pit. And uh, it's also got these counterweights on it that make these things uh, a very, very easy task to, uh, to lift throughout the day. Um, he puts his counterweights over the fulcrum of the pit. So as soon as you go to lift it, it's assisting with that door, you know, you don't have any issues trying to power clean these. Like you can literally use a pinky to, uh, to lift them these up. And I'm just gonna show y'all how I do it. And so with this specific pit here, um, it gets six days of use uh, minimally. And uh, we run it from 5 a.m. to about 5 p.m., about 12 hours a day, six days a week. We'll do turkey on here, we'll do ribs on here, we'll do chickens on here. We'll do uh, steaks as well, burgers, briskets and pork shoulder we do on another pit, but uh, we cook on this one every day for service. And I'm gonna show y'all how I get these grates out of here and uh, how we clean it. So the grates, after every use, uh, we just go ahead and hit them with the grill brush. Uh, you can get these at Restaurant Depot or any sort of restaurant supply place. It's a grill brush, it's got kind of a more fine end and then uh, a more coarse end and a lot of times like you know when I go to scrape one I'll get what I can off of it but what doesn't come off I will just it will be all right and so we do scrape these down after every use what we're really trying to do is, is we're trying to get all the uh, the nasty out of the bottom of this pit and I will show you how we do that black belt tip for y'all is uh, the one that's closest to the fire I'm gonna go ahead and switch and put it furthest from the fire, just so there's even wear on all my grates. It's not a pretty part of the job, nor a fun part, but it's necessary. Yeah, because if you don't clean it, the meat's gonna taste kind of rancid, right? Yep. Because the oil eventually settles onto the meat. Yep. So necessary evil, but uh, not a favorite chore, but must be done. Must be done. Probably don't want it smoking like this one is, but uh, you definitely do want it to be warm, just so it can loosen up all this uh, gunk that we got collected in here. And so we'll go ahead and loosen some of this stuff up. And folks, do not wear your church clothes on pit day because they will get dirty. So once I get all of this uh, solid debris out of here, um, I'll go ahead and get a water hose and uh, angle the pit down to where it's draining right here. Um, there's a winch over there that I can turn and it'll just plop all of that grease and water onto the bottom of this pit. Um, we can use any sort of degrease or anything like that. Just some elbow grease. Oh, this is uh, what? Old salt and pepper or old meat? Old just rubs, grease that has gone off of the meat. A little bit of that jerk sauce probably found its way in here. Lots and lots of different cuts of meat have passed through this pit, but we're going to get it out. So once I get all this bigger pieces out of here, I'm going to go ahead and get a bench knife and I'm going to be able to get in here a little bit more thoroughly. I'll show you all what a bench knife is if, for those of you that don't know. But uh, it's going to be a little bit hands-on. I won't be afforded the uh, distance from this delightful black sludge that I am with the, uh, the shovel. But necessary evil comes with the territory. All right, so this is what's called a bench knife, y'all. Um, we use it to clean the block. Some people use it to clean their flat top. I like to use it to clean a pit. Man, if I could fit, I'd crawl in here, but... <sighs> You gotta be pretty long and tall to reach in too, right? Because if you are under five feet, you're gonna, not gonna make it. 
Yeah, you're probably gonna have to go ahead and just get in it. I'm gonna fall in. Yeah. <laughs> now that I got all of the solid debris out, now I'm just pulling all the grease and uh, knocking what little debris I didn't uh, already knock loose. Damn sure that this thing doesn't overflow because you will have a miserable time cleaning this up or trying to get it out from under there once it is too full. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and just let it go. You're never going to get all of it out, but uh, just getting that large pieces of debris out of there is uh, going to be paramount to uh, not throwing any sort of that nasty flavor. Now that we have put some water in here though, and uh, we have kind of stirred a lot of this up, once we get our grates back in here, we're going to want to put another fire into it just to make sure that on our next cook that none of that stuff activates again. So we'll build another fire in here after we put our grates in and uh, kind of let it dry itself out. So tomorrow when I come to light it, it won't have uh, any sort of issues. All right guys, thank y'all for uh, watching me clean this pit here at Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue. This is our 1000 gallon Syntex. Um, this is not the most glorious part of the job, but it is absolutely necessary. If you're watching this and you haven't cleaned your pit, this is probably a sign you need to. Don't wear your Sunday clothes. And uh, if you're gonna do it, you gotta minimally do it as good as I did. I know you could probably do it better, but uh, we're happy with this and uh, we had a long day and we're, we're about ready to call it quits. So you're gonna find me at uh, BobbyQ512 uh, on Instagram. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-U-E 512. Uh, go ahead and give me a follow and uh, shoot me any questions you might have about uh, different smoked meats in our menu and I'd be happy to get back with you. Love chatting barbecue. Thanks again, y'all.